I am Araceli, a wealth advisor, real estate investor in the United States and Canada, and creator of Wealthy Women in Real Estate. Every week, I meet with Colette, a real estate broker and a real estate investor in Canada. We come together to talk about all things real estate investing and how to increase your wealth. Join us. Welcome everyone. This is Araceli, Transition Wealth Advisor and Real Estate Investor in the U.S. and Canada. And for those who are not Canadians, let me tell you, this is just to show you that we are Canadians and we're celebrating Canada Day um, this week. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic time. And my weekly call with Colette, so we have an interesting information for you specifically for those people who are ready to buy a property. Colette, can you introduce yourself and tell us about the subject today? Of course. Hi everyone. My name is Colette Rava. I am a residential real estate broker in the GTA. I like to work West End and uh, as you know I'm also an investor and that's why Araceli and I love to talk about real estate and finance and how they work together. And uh, today we're talking about four things sellers specifically should look for in an offer. But before we get started, I would like to remind you all to please subscribe, like, ask us all the questions that you have, that we are here for you. We want to give you content that you really need and you'd like and you can actually uh, use. So please don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, are you ready? Are you ready for this? Okay, great. I'm going to share my screen and then we're going to uh, get started. So give me two seconds. Let me get my techie hat on so I know what I'm doing. Can you see my screen? Yes. How's that? How's that? How's that? I get all, all of the full on right in the screen. Are we good? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And happy Canada day, everybody. I know Americans seem to be a lot more, uh, um, you know, they love their country and, and be more, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, patriotic. Patriotic. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's terrible. I love being Canadian. I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, I know, uh, uh, our countries we're, we're, we're neighbors, so we have to get along, right? Absolutely. Anyway. Plus, we and, love it. We love the U.S. because I invest in the U.S. and it is amazing to do that, to be able to do that. So we're very fortunate that Canadians can actually do that as well. Right. So, and when we call ourselves American, we are also American because we're in North America. That's right. <laughs> so, so we're all friends, right? So let's go. Uh, and these things, whenever we talk about uh, real estate, it also is very similar to the U.S. So the, the verbiage might be a little bit different, but otherwise uh, we have a lot of commonalities in the way real estate works in Canada and in the U.S. So uh, if you are American and you are watching this, obviously these things uh, make a difference or they, they, they hold true in the U.S. as well. So let's get started, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, so four things. So why I wanted to write this about the four things shall, sellers should look for when they get an offer on their sale of their house. It's important because we talk a lot about buyers and what buyers should ask sellers, but we don't really, I find that there's not a lot of information out there for sellers, but it's very important that you have a uh, number, you know, not, this is not one of them, but really to have your own representation as a listing agent, as the selling agent, you should be very confident in that person to know that um, they're there for you and uh, they should be able to ask or answer all of your questions and keep you safe uh, with paperwork, with the whole deal, even after the deal to make sure everything goes very smoothly a lot of the responsibility of these things that we're going to talk about have to do with your agent as well. You don't need to make these decisions on your own. If you're unsure, you should always ask the agent, your representation, your representative to answer all these questions. So let's get started. So basically the four things I chose just to keep it nice and simple, it's more than just the purchase price because everybody, as you know, says, oh, I got, you know, $5 billion over asking. Okay, that's great. 
but <laughs> you know there are other steps there too right so it's not just about price so these are a few things that I find are very important and I talk to my clients about it too so item number one you want to take this one because you are the finance lady yeah so let me just move our faces out of the way so I can see what's going on <laughs> sure so obviously the first thing that most people take a look at is their finances or they should for sure because the more you are prepared, and this is not only about the financing, but also about your credit, because the credit is going to determine the interest rate that you get. If you see some uh, interest advertised by a financial institution, whether it's a bank, a credit union, anybody out there, that is not necessarily the rate that you would get, because it all depends on your credit score. So that's what is very important for you to get all that way ahead of time before you actually start getting on the hunt. And then also to know how much you're going to be saving for your down payment, what is it that you're going to be able to afford, and then start looking for an actual mortgage. If you live in Canada, most people in Canada will buy a property with a mortgage because of the prices of the property. If you are in the US that you can actually buy the entire property, you may be able to do it, um, you know, with no conditions obviously, but it's still, you still need to put a plan together in place. Okay, so why is it important for the sellers to know what the buyers are going to use as their financing method? So this is about the sellers looking at an offer and the question is for the sellers to have to worry about the buyers financing, why? Well, because you know, they're already, like if you're committing to sell it to somebody, you wanna make sure that they're actually going to be able to follow through and buy your property. You don't wanna just say, oh, okay, so you wanna buy it, okay. And then they come back and they say, well, we weren't approved. Right. And then you right. lost that opportunity to be able to sell it to somebody else that is qualified. Exactly. So that's why it's so important for the sellers to talk to either the buying agent or the buyers, you know, when, when you're yeah. you know, the two the two groups are talking to each other. That is something that I do for my client my sellers. I go and make sure, or as much as I can, to talk to the buying agent to say you know, what are they approved for? When can they close by? Uh, do they need something like a vendor take back if they can't get financing? Things are changing in the world right now. So even though uh, some some people, obviously, before they make an offer, they have to get pre-approved. In my opinion, I don't work with anybody uh, until they are pre-approved for whatever amount that they can get approved for. Things are changing in the world right now. Mortgage rates are going up. Uh, the the loan to value rates are changing as well it's very very important that you get all that information beforehand so let's say you're the seller and you have two or three offers at hand this is about choosing the best method for the seller you know who is financially uh, the best um, you know offer so that to me, that's why I think number one is very, this this item is very important to know yeah. what the without, finance Without is. finance, you know, without knowing how you're gonna be able to close on that property, nothing will happen. So take time to really understand your own finances, what you can afford and so on, because it'll save you a lot of headache. The rest of it is right. the fun step, right? This is kind of the hard part. Oh, this is all the hard stuff. Okay, so let's go to item number two. So the deposit amount. And this is the thing that we, people kind of are still a little bit uh, gray on because they think the deposit amount and the down payment amount is the same. So right there, it is not the same. Deposit amount is uh, a, a gesture yeah. to say, I will, I will put down this to hold on to this offer that I have. So the deposit is usually between three and five percent in Canada. That's what um, you know. We're we usually like to see, and sometimes even the uh, selling agent will tell the buying agent we would like to see 
an amount, a certain amount. So let's say on $500,000, 3% is $15,000. And uh, 5% on, um, so it's usually, I wanna say between three and 5%, unless uh, the seller says, I need to see $50,000 to know that these people are serious. So that's really what the dep deposit amount looks like. So what happens, Colette, if the, uh, the buyer doesn't follow through and they're already giving a deposit? What wow. happens to it? Can I get my deposit back? Not real. Yes and no. <laughs> it's very, So in Canada, and this is the thing, we have certain rules that... Uh, so number one, if you're my buying client, uh, that would never be a question because we would write it into the offer. So that's coming up. That's also another um, item that we have on our list today, which is conditions. So, so really, you should uh, have a buffer, if you want to say, if you're not sure of if you can finance or if there are other reasons why you think you can't close on the property. As the buyer, and you know, this is supposed to be for sellers, but let's just say as a buyer, maybe we have to do a show just on, on buyers. Buyers, yeah. Yeah, so let's just say the buyer uh, totally flakes and you know, they can't close for whatever reason they didn't get their financing figured out. Um, and this is what was happening, actually, I'll tell you a quick story. So what was happening when uh, 2017, when the market just like climbed like crazy, what would happen are, especially with investors, investor, investors would buy one property, put a really low deposit on that one property. Then another property that looked even better uh, came up for sale and they wanted to buy that property, but they already purchased something. So they didn't put a huge deposit down on the first house. So they walked away from that deal and said, okay, let them sue us, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they bought the second property. So that's why a deposit amount is very crucial to say, how can you just like forfeit $50,000 or whatever the amount of money, $10,000. Yeah. For, for a builder, for a contractor, uh, for someone who's an investor, $10,000 might just be the cost of business. And they, you know, then, then it's really up to the sellers to be like, oh my gosh, now what do I do? So this is all about sellers being safe. So, so technically speaking, a larger amount of the deposit held in trust by the real estate agent or the lawyer's office is typically a more serious buyer. So that's why you want to consider the larger deposit amount. And as a good agent, the agent should always be aware of that and say, Hey, this is a really good, healthy deposit amount. I would take that offer over a similar offer, let's say that has a lower deposit amount. So that's number two. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So the, and I, I'm not skirting the question of, of if a buyer would get their deposit back. It's a very detailed issue and every sale is different. And I can't say carte blanche, they keep the deposit or they don't keep their deposit. Yeah. In Canada, there are laws around that, that when you release that other person to resell the house, it releases the deposit as well. So you may not, you may be able to keep the deposit and you may not be able to. Well, so it's that's a bigger... why it's important to have a good real estate agent that knows all of these little things. So. Yay! I hope that's me. Okay, so item three. <laughs> Do you want to take take this one away? Yeah, sure. Talk about so, that. so conditions. So all the offers uh, have lots of conditions, and it's to make your life easier. And so, and it's also for it has to fit your own criteria. Because if you are selling a property and you're buying another property, it might depend on the other. Uh, house closing or not closing or whatever you know you may be moving out of town and you're not buying anything you're renting so you can actually close a lot quicker so there's lots of little things that this depends on your own lifestyle yes and so I put down a couple of what conditions could look like in an offer so and that's why when when we say you know taking taking the easiest offer uh, when there's less conditions, that is good and bad because as a seller, if you have something to hide and you don't want to accept a condition on inspection, mm -hmm. 
then the buyer might walk because they say, oh, you have something to hide. But if you have another offer, let's say in a multiple offer situation, you have, and this is what just happened last year and the year before when, you know, prices went crazy and people were going yeah. nuts. And they, they waived conditions like financing, like inspection. Those are the two big ones. Um, and lawyer approval too. So let's say lawyer approval comes into play more with condos and having them look at the status certificate of a condo yeah. and saying, ah, I don't like it, or yes, I like it, or there's something fishy, or there's extra fees. You know, that's why you, you want to write in a lawyer's approval. So as a seller, you have to be careful to not take those conditions. So if you have a buyer who is serious and they say, listen, I just want to be safe. I just want to know the house is okay. Yeah. Don't cross off those conditions they're asking so, for. Tell me, Colette, so what happens if the, let's say in the crazy market that we had in a couple of years, that the inspection is waived and then you find something that it's not, that it's going to cost you a little bit of money. So what happens then? So you're stuck with it? Oh, this is a big secret. I don't know if I want to tell you my secret. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so basically, uh, you you if you waive the inspection, you still want to write in visits to the house be, before closing. Before closing. If you take one of those visits to have an inspector come in with you, that is your right to do that. It's in the boilerplate um, um, uh, uh, forms that we use that a, a buyer has the right to inspect the property so in one of your visits you don't have to say it's a condition so when you write it in as a condition and you find something during the inspection on that condition then you can say you know what we didn't like the inspection report we're, we're walking away so that's a condition if you had to waive the condition because you wanted to actually buy the house and you were afraid you still go in with an inspection with an inspector before closing mm -hmm. and you find something that should have been disclosed this is where it gets tricky so if there is a big thing that should have been disclosed let's say something that you can't see with your eyes but let's say you bring an inspector in and uh, there's something wrong with the roof trusses that there's a structural issue you can go back now it's a lawyer's issue between the lawyers then you can go back to the seller to say hey you guys should have disclosed that there was a fire in the attic let's say and you didn't now either i want to walk or i want you to fix it and before we close and then it gets into a big ball of craziness that you might have to cl uh, close later you might have to ask for money off they might have to get it fixed and then by the time it gets fixed, the timing might be off. So it's a big ball of craziness. But if you choose to waive inspection and not have an inspector go in before closing so that you've closed now and then you find the issues, it's all yours. You have to deal with it. You've inherited the problems and there are a lot of problems that you don't see with your naked eye. and. And it's that argument of you should have disclosed this and you didn't. So it's a very slippery slope. I never, even during those times of, of craziness, I would never say wave inspection, but I am the, the, the messenger. So you as a buyer, if you want to wave inspection, that's really up to you. But I would never, I would never say wave inspection. Um, other things too, like disclosures. Let's say you didn't realize that the house was designated heritage. You want to renovate the whole house. You want to tear the house down. Ha, guess what? If you didn't know that it was a heritage designation, you can't tear the house down. Yeah. So these are all the things that you want to write down. If you have a feeling like this inkling of like all the other houses on the street are designated heritage, but the seller didn't disclose it, you want to make sure that all those disclosures are written in. So as a seller, because this is what the show is about seller, you have to disclose all this stuff. You know, don't think that, oh, they're, it's their responsibility to, to say all that stuff. You could still be, as a seller, you could still be in trouble. If you can't get insurance on the property, you have to disclose that. If there's any stigmas about the property, maybe there was a murder in the house, like, you know, three centuries ago, I don't know. 
you got to disclose that <laughs> because a buyer will probably find out and then you don't want to be in trouble as a seller, right? Yeah, absolutely. And some of the things are, well, depend on what kind of conditions, but when I bought my first property, I knew and the actual, when I contacted the insurance company, they told me at that time I had some uh, old wiring right and needed to replace it and says there cannot be any number two in the house at all before we can insure you and they gave me 30 days to get all the work done so find out all of those conditions because if you need to move in right away you may not have the insurance until you fix certain things so was that before or after you closed that you found that out after i closed they gave me why didn't your inspector find that no no the inspector find out i knew before that okay so you knew before you closed yeah. so technically you could have said if you had a condition based on inspection and they found knob and tube then you could have said okay let me find out who the insurance company is how much the insurance is what do i need to do and then make a decision on on if you yeah. actually want to buy the property or not yeah there's still a lot of houses with knob and tube and it's really you have to make sure that it's all clear in canada in the u.s it's a little bit different right yeah. they might be okay yeah. with yes. <laughs> well depending on the state so you gotta check on the state right. that you're in yeah in some cases you're able to have half and half so if you let's say that you're reconditioning something if you're adding a kitchen then you have to use new wiring but if you already have no to somewhere in the house you don't have to um, recondition that but you take all of it take yeah. that with the particular state that you are investing in so that right. is just kind of tidbit for the u.s yeah no that's it's fa fascinating so so absolutely make sure and that again your agent should be able to answer all those questions for you yes. right? okay number four is the last one sadly but very important is your closing date even though you where are you going you're the seller right what's your closing date where are you gonna go do you have a house did you buy already and you want to be out by a certain time these are the things timeline is so important not just for the the buyer but the seller this is such a, a um easy thing and a difficult thing at the same time because if you need more time let's say you're buying a new build and it's not built yet you as a seller kind of know what your closing date should be but guess what builders always push back because especially now they can't find people to work you know supplies might not be available so they'll push back closing on the per on the property that you are moving into what's that going to look like might not that be that easy so i really want you as a seller to be very confident on the date that you want for closing and if you have multiple offers always give yourself a buffer don't please 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 don't ever close on the same day that you're closing on your next property please <laughs> don't do it lawyers will put your head on a stake like is this yeah. not if Not something good. goes wrong, then you're on the street for a few days. At least, right, or in a hotel. <laughs> Let's just, or in your car, God forbid. Exactly. And the thing is, it's not only you, it's that if you have a truck full of furniture and stuff, you have to be incurring extra charges for keeping the truck for two or three days. And of course, it's very inconvenient for everybody, right? And yeah. It's like you're moving twice. Nobody wants to do that. So always make sure your timelines are good. Always move out before they move in. So even if you have to bridge finance for a couple days or a week or a month, 100% yeah. do it any time. A lot of buyers, even at the last minute, this is another real estate secret. If they want to move in sooner and the, and the sellers can actually offer that, you can change. I'm going to say thank you. And then, so this is just some final notes uh, while I'm talking. Um, but honestly, when it comes to meeting of the minds, that's really what real estate is about. When the buyer and seller can, can agree, you can even ask before you even sign the offer to say, how flexible is their closing date? Because that way, if they are flexible, let's say they're moving from their parents' house or they're moving from another country 
and they have to stay in a hotel for a few weeks and they can be flexible with a faster closing date or a longer closing date. This is, this is ideal because even like a week before closing, you can always go back. Either party can go back and say, hey, we would like to change closing date. Could we either speed it up or slow it down? And if the other party agrees, then fantastic. They don't have to. There's nothing to say that they have to. And I've had deals where, um, where I've had uh, buyers, I was representing the, the seller, and buyers would come and say, hey, we would like to speed up closing or slow down closing. And my, my seller said no, because I have a plan. I have to be out of this house by the certain date for whatever their reason, and it didn't work out. So you have to be okay, but it doesn't hurt to ask if you need to change that closing date. So do you want to go through a couple last notes here? Um, yes. Yeah, so remember that moving, it requires, especially if you're buying a resale property, you're going to depend somehow on when they're going to be able to be out. And as I said before, if that seller already has a place ready, that's great. You might be able to do what Colette said, change the, uh, the moving date. But if not, then you may have to adapt to whenever that property will be available for you to move in. So that's, uh, that's basically all I have. And just so you know, there is always buyers and sellers and you can match up. That is, is, is spe specifically what it is about this transaction. Not only about how much money you're paying or how much money you're getting for the property, but all of the conditions have to be in place for you to be able to close this property properly. Yeah, and, and you know, I hate to toot my own horn, but really your agent should be able to communicate for you throughout the whole process. So even before the other agent makes, uh, the, buy, the buyers make an offer, there's a lot of communication that happens between agents. And if those agents are uh, not on the same page, you'll even know before you get the offer. So yeah. a lot of the times uh, the buyer wants to please the, the seller because they want the house. So really, this is something that as a seller, you should be very confident with having uh, the right price, the right conditions, the right closing date, everything to make you happy first before the buyer, because um, it's your house, right? <laughs> it's your money. It's your decision, ultimately, right? So to absolutely. make sure that you feel very, very confident, and you can, you can absolutely get all the conditions that you want as a as a seller, not a buyer. As a seller, you put it out there saying, "This is the closing I want. This is the money I want." Uh, you know, if it's not astronomically crazy out of the norm, you should be able to get all the conditions and everything figured out way before you have to close. Make sense? That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Colette, for putting the presentation together. And if you do have any questions or are looking to buy, remember to get in touch with Colette, but make sure that you also have your finances ready. If you don't, then contact me. So this is all we have for you today, this week. And remember, it's Happy Canada Day, so enjoy. Thank you, Colette. Thanks for, thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great uh, Canada Day and a great day. Thank you for being here on the show. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when there are more shows available. And if you would like to have more information on how to start investing in real estate, please visit my website at www.aracelihernandez.com. Thank you.